Hey everyone, you're watching AshDev. Welcome to this tutorial series on creating an FPS game in Unity. In this series, you'll learn essential skills for any first-person game, from character movement to a weapon system and VFX. In this video, we'll create smooth character movement with jump and sprint abilities, implement dynamic footstep sounds for different terrains, and finish with an immersive camera shake effect. After the series ends, project files will be available on our Discord server for two weeks, so be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. After that, the project files will only be available to our Patreon members. Now let's start with creating the character movement. First, create an empty game object in your Unity scene and add a character controller component to it. When you attach this component, a capsule collider will automatically appear. This is used by the character controller for collision detection and other interactions. Next, create a capsule as a child object within this game object. This capsule will act as a temporary player body. Go ahead and remove its capsule collider since the character controller already includes one. If you want, you can also add a face or a front marker to the capsule so it's easier to see which way the character is facing. Finally, fine-tune the character controller's capsule to fit your player model by adjusting the radius, height, and if necessary, the center point to ensure it aligns perfectly with your model. Next, let's code some movement for our character. Begin by creating a new script named Player Controller. Inside this script, we'll first set up the input controls. Start by defining two float variables, move input and turn input. These variables will capture the player's forward and backward movement, as well as their turning, respectively. To handle the input from the player, create a function named input management. In this function, assign move input to track the vertical input from the W and S keys and turn input to capture the horizontal input from the A and D keys. It's crucial to ensure the strings vertical and horizontal are spelled correctly, as any spelling mistakes will prevent the inputs from being recognized. Make sure to call the input management function within the update method. This ensures that the inputs are checked and updated every frame. Now to implement basic movement for our character. First, create a new header labeled References. Under this header, define a private variable for the character controller named player controller. This will allow us to call the character controller's methods later on. Next, add another header named movement settings, and under this header, declare a float variable called move speed and set its initial value to five. This variable will control how fast the character moves. Next in the start function, get the character controller component attached to the game object by using get component character controller and assign it to the controller variable. Now let's write a function named ground movement. In this function, create a vector three called move. The X value of this vector should be set to turn input to handle sideways movement and the Z value should be set to move input for forward and backward movement. Since we don't want the character to move up or down, set the Y value to zero. Then to apply movement speed, multiply this vector by move speed. Finally, to move the character, use the controller.move function and multiply the move vector by time dot delta time to ensure the movement is smooth and frame rate independent. Create another function named movement and call the ground movement function inside it. Then call the movement function within the update method. While it may seem redundant at first to wrap the ground movement function call inside another function, this approach keeps the code clean and well-structured, allowing for easy updates and maintenance. Now head over to the Unity editor and attach the player controller script to your player object. Once you've done this, press the play button to start the game and you should see that your player now has the basic movement functionality. Next, let's add a camera. Start by importing the Cinemachine package from the Unity Package Manager. Now create a new virtual camera as a child of the player game object. Then create an empty game object named Follow Target and drag it into the Follow field of the virtual camera. And then drag the player game object into the Look At field of the virtual camera. In the body settings, select hard lock to target, and in the aim settings, select do nothing. Next, move to the script. Create a reference to the virtual camera. 
then create two float variables to store the mouse input, named mouse X and mouse Y. Add another float named mouse sensitivity and a float named X rotation. Then in the input management function, get the mouse X and mouse Y input. Now create a turn function and inside it, first multiply mouse X and mouse Y by mouse sensitivity and time dot delta time so that we can adjust the sensitivity later on. Then subtract mouse Y from X rotation to get the X axis rotation value for the camera. We used mouse Y here because the vertical movement of the mouse controls the camera's up and down rotation, which is the X axis rotation. Clamp this value between minus 90 and 90 degrees to prevent over rotation. Set the camera's local X rotation to this value and set the Y and Z rotations to zero. For rotating the player, set its Y axis rotation to mouse X using vector 3 dot up. Finally, go back to the editor, assign the virtual camera's reference and set the sensitivity and you're done. The camera is now working correctly. Now let's add gravity to our controller. Start by adding a new float variable named gravity in the movement settings section of your script and set it to 9.8 to mimic Earth's gravity. Also, declare another float called vertical velocity to keep track of the vertical movement speed of the character. Next, create a function named vertical force calculation. This function will handle the application of gravity. First, check if the character controller is grounded using the controller dot is grounded. If the character is grounded, set the vertical velocity to a small negative value such as minus one to ensure the character maintains contact with the ground and doesn't start to float due to any minor inaccuracies in terrain levels. If not grounded, it means the character is either falling or jumping. So you should subtract the gravity value multiplied by time dot delta time to vertical velocity to simulate falling. Then return vertical velocity and now in our ground movement function, set move.y to vertical velocity. Now let's add the jumping ability. First create a new float variable named jump height to determine how high the character will jump. Set this variable to a value of two. Next, go to vertical force calculation function. Inside it, when the player is grounded, check if the jump button is pressed. Then set the vertical velocity to mathf.square root of jump height multiplied by gravity multiplied by 2. This formula calculates the initial velocity needed to reach the desired jump height, factoring in gravity's pull. After implementing these changes, return to the editor to check if the jump performs as expected, reaching the appropriate height and allowing for subsequent jumps only when the character has landed back on the ground. Now let's add sprint ability. First, declare a new float variable called sprint speed and set its value to 10, which will be the speed at which the character sprints. Also, create another float called Sprint Transit Speed, which will determine how quickly the character transitions to sprinting speed. And lastly, create another float named Speed for storing the current speed value. Next, in the Move function, check if the left shift key is pressed. If it is, use mathf.lerp to smoothly transition the current speed to the sprint speed with respect to speed transit time. If the left shift key is not pressed, transition back to the move speed. And also change the move speed written below to speed. Now, head back to the Unity editor to test the sprint functionality. Press and hold the left shift key while moving your character. And you should see the character sprinting. With this final piece, your basic character movement setup is complete. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like and share it with your fellow developers. Now, let's add footstep sounds to enhance the player's immersion. We'll use different sounds for various terrains. First, create an audio source named footstep sound under a references header in your script. Next, create a new header named footstep settings. In it, create a layer mask variable named terrain layer mask to detect if the player is walking on a terrain object. Then, create a float variable named step interval which will define the time interval between each footstep sound while walking. Finally, create another float named next step time and initialize it to zero. This variable will help in implementing the footstep sound loop. Next, create a new header named SFX. Under this header, create arrays of audio clip for each terrain type you have in your game. 
For this example, we'll use three terrain types, ground, grass, and gravel. Name the arrays accordingly. Firstly, we need to identify which footstep sound to play based on the terrain the player is currently on. To achieve this, create a function named determine audio clips that returns an array of audio clips. Inside this function, create a raycast hit variable named hit. Perform a raycast from the player's body in the player's local downward direction using an optimal ray length. You can create a new float variable to adjust the ray length if needed. Set the layer mask to terrain layer mask to avoid unnecessary raycasts. Within the function, get the tag of the terrain the raycast hits and store it as a string. Compare this tag to your predefined terrain tags and return the relevant audio clips array based on the comparison. Don't forget to set a default array for cases where the player is on unknown terrain. If the tags don't match, I am using ground as default. If the raycast does not hit anything, return the default audio clips array. Now, create a function named play footstep sound. In this function, first create an array named footstep clips to store the appropriate footstep sounds retrieved from the determine footstep sound function. Then, check if this array contains at least one clip and is not empty. If so, select a random clip from the array and play it once using the play one shot function. To prevent the sound from playing repeatedly in quick succession, wrap this code in an if statement that checks if time.time .time is greater than or equal to next step time, which represents the time remaining before the next clip can be played. If the condition is met, set next step time to time.time .time plus step interval. Let's break this down with an example. Suppose step interval is set to one second and the game has just started. Initially, time.time .time will be zero and next step time will also be zero. This satisfies the condition, so the sound will play, and next step time will be updated to time.time .time plus step interval, which is one. When the next frame is processed, time.time .time will reflect the time elapsed since the last frame, let's say 0.2 seconds. At this point, time.time .time is less than next step time, so the sound will not play. Assuming a fixed frame rate, after approximately five frames, time.time .time will reach one. At this point, the loop will execute again, playing the clip and updating next step time to the current time.time .time plus the interval, making it two seconds. This ensures the sound plays at the correct intervals. Now wrap this inside an if statement checking if the player is grounded and is moving. If both conditions are met, only then the code will further execute. Finally, call this function in the update method. Now, get back to the editor and attach an audio source component to the player, then drag and drop it into the footstep sound reference in your script. Next, create the terrain layer and assign it accordingly. Finally, create and assign the appropriate tags for the different terrains, and then provide all the sound effects and set the terrain layer mask. Now, at this point, the setup should work nicely, but you might notice that when you start running, the footstep sound doesn't change to match the faster pace. To fix this, we need to make a few adjustments. First, change the sprint speed variable's name to sprint speed multiplier. To change its name throughout the script, select it, press Ctrl plus R twice, and then rename it. This will update its name everywhere it's referenced. Set its value to two, because previously we were using a sprint speed of 10 and our move speed was five. Next, Create another float variable named current speed multiplier and rename the speed variable to current speed for better clarity. Then, in the ground movement function, move the line that interpolates the speed out of the if statement and make it interpolate to move speed multiplied by current speed multiplier. Under the if statement, set current speed multiplier to sprint speed multiplier when the left shift key is pressed and set it to one in the else clause. Now, in the play footstep sound function, divide the step interval by current speed multiplier. By doing this, if the current speed multiplier increases, the step interval will decrease accordingly, resulting in faster footstep sounds that match the player's running pace. Now, for the camera shake effect, start by creating a new header named camera bob settings. Under this header, create two float variables, bob frequency and bob amplitude. 
The frequency determines how fast you want the shake to occur, while the amplitude determines how strong the shake should be. Next, create a variable to store the component of type Cinemachine Basic Multi-Channel Perlin. In the start function, get noise component using get Cinemachine component. Then create a function named CameraBob. In this function, create an if statement, checking if the player is grounded and moving in it. Set the amplitude and frequency of the noise component to Bob amplitude and Bob frequency respectively. And if the player is not grounded or not moving, set the amplitude and frequency of the noise component to zero. And lastly, to make them change with current speed, multiply them with current speed multiplier. And then call this function in the late update method. In the Unity editor, add the noise component to the virtual camera. Select the noise profile that suits your game best and your camera shake is ready. That's it for this video. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions for future tutorials. See you in the next video.